Costello program starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costly or properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne's orchestra, Iris Adrian, our singing star Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub who, when caught asking a neighbor lady to take her shoes off because his uncle Artie Stebbins said she had crow's feet, calmly said, "I'm." Why weren't you here fixing up the house for the party tonight? Oh, hey, Abbott, I had to get down to jail to get my landlady out. You know, Mrs. Satchel Puss? Yeah. I had to get her out on bail. What do you she mean? She got arrested for shoplifting. They finally caught her. Uh, I thought she mm-hmm. was too smart to get caught. Well, she made a mistake. She stole an alarm clock and hid it in her bustle. Well, how, how did they catch her? Her bustle went off at a quarter of eight. <laughs> well, never mind your landlady. Never mind your landlady. Did you send out the invitations for the party? Oh, yeah. I got them right here. Look what it says. What is it? Luke Costello invites you to a Christmas party to be held at his home. B-A-P-O-B. B-A-P-O-B? <laughs> yep, yep. You mean R-S-V-P. Oh, no. I mean B-A-P-O-B. Bring a pound of butter. <laughs> oh, boy. What a party I'm going to have. My Aunt May will bring her cranberry sauce. That's her specialty. Aunt Catherine will bring her plum pudding. That's her specialty. And Aunt Eva will bring her 14 children. That's, uh, uh, that's a nice family. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Never mind your relatives. Look, forget about your relatives for a minute, Lou. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you remember to get souvenirs for everybody? Oh, souvenirs. Yes. Yeah, I'm having favors for the girls. At 12 o'clock, I'm going to turn the lights off. Oh, yeah. Any favors for the men? What do you call turning the lights off? Uh, look, Costello. Who did you invite besides your relatives? Oh, a lot of movie stars. And I invited Lana Turner. And she kissed me. And right, Turner kissed you. The smoke isn't coming out of my ears for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How about the tree? Uh, did you get a tree? Hmm? Did you get a tree? Oh, did I get a tree? Yeah. I got the biggest Christmas tree you oh, ever that's... saw. Well, I just got through putting it in the living room. You did. What a tree! It's six feet higher than the ceiling. Well, it's a shame to have to cut the top off. That's the way I felt about it too. Sure, oh, sure. So I cut a hole in the ceiling. I have. <laughs> Ceiling of our, our living room? Yeah, this will be the first Christmas we ever had a tree in our bathroom. <laughs> what kind of a tree did you get? Is it a fur? Oh, yes, it's one of those. What did you say? I said, did you get a fur? No, I got a tree. Uh... Oh, stop this silliness. I, I, I want to see your fur. See my fur? Certainly. What am I, a silver fox? No, 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 you dummy. I'm not talking about uh, fur, F U R. The fur. The fur, I mean, has an eye in it. Oh, the fur has an eye in it? Yes. Just one eye? It certainly there's just why. one eye in fur. Must be I, J. Fox. No, 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 look. I... <laughs> Stand still when I'm talking to you. Yes, sir. I'm talking about a fur tree. Mm-hmm. Now, will you quit talking about the fur with you in it? You doesn't belong in the kind of fur I'm talking about. I doesn't belong in that kind of fur? Oh, yes. I belongs in it. But uh, you doesn't. Well, why should you belong in fur if I doesn't? <laughs> better in fur than you do. I'm prettier than you. I'm cuter than you. You bad boy. No, no remarks, no remarks. You bad boy. Never mind. I'm trying to find out what kind of a Christmas tree you got. Look, wait a minute. Here, I've got it. What kind of bark did it have? What kind of bark? Yes. Uh, didn't you notice the uh, tree's bark? No, I have my earmuffs on. No, no, no. <laughs> bark, bark, bark. Oh, bark. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> tell her the bark of the tree is the outer coat. Did the uh, tree have a rough coat? No, but the girl who sold to me had on a smooth sweater. No. <laughs> <laughs> No time, no time for singing, please. Uh, the bark is the coat. Yeah. You find it on the trunk of a fir tree. A tree has a trunk? Oh, of course. That must be where he keeps his coat and fur. No, Costello. I'm going to try to explain it to you. No. Yes. All Christmas trees belong to the pine family. Oh, no, they don't. Oh, this yes. Christmas tree belongs to me, no, brother. No, wait a minute. Let the pine family get the wrong tree. Forget the pine family, Costello. I don't think you know anything about trees. 
Who don't? You don't. I do. I make my own trees. Did you see them yourself? Did I see them? <laughs> yes, yes, I asked you. Did you see your own trees? Yes, I seed them every day. I seed them this morning. I seed them last night. You can come over and seed them any time oh, you want. How can I seed them when you seeded them first? Look, Abbott, what have I got in front of my house? Uh, trees. Did you see them? No. Did I see them? Yes. In other words, you looked at my trees, but you didn't see them. Uh, that's right. Let me smell your breath. Oh, I don't know why I spent time with you. I was trying to tell you about the pine tar. Uh, we get tar from pine. We get what? A tar. Tar. Haven't you ever heard of pine tar? No, but I heard of a tree tar. Tree tar? Yeah. Clang, clang, clang with the tree tar. Ah. Clang, clang, clang with the tree tar. As a Christmas present to her camel fans, lovely Connie Haynes repeats the song she helped make so popular. With my high dark collar and my high top shoes and my hair up high up on my head, I went to lose a jolly hour upon the trolley and lost my heart instead. With his light brown derby and his bright green tie, he was quite the handsomest of men. Connie, I can't think of anything quite as pleasant as your voice. Except perhaps the smoke of camels on my T-zone. The T-zone. T for taste, T for throat. The zone where smokers test the smoke of any cigarette. Right. It's with his own T-zone that each smoker must judge a cigarette. How the first cigarette of the morning tastes on your tongue. How even the last cigarette of the day feels to your throat. Only your T-zone can tell. That's how millions of smokers, forced to try many different brands when cigarettes were scarce, learned how good a camel is. And that's why more smokers prefer camels today than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S For camels are the choice of experience. Costello, what did we have to come downtown for? Oh, I gotta get some more spaghetti, Abbott, so I can finish trimming my Christmas tree. I couldn't find any tinsel this year, so I'm trimming a tree with spaghetti. And boy, does it look beautiful. Oh, what's beautiful about trimming a tree with spaghetti? Every time I plug it in, the meatballs light up. <laughs> yes, I do. There you go with that silliness again. Hey, Abbott, look who's in the car. It's that movie actress, Betsy May Mucho. Hello, Miss Mucho. Hello, boys. Gee, I'm glad I saw you. I want to invite you to my Christmas party tonight, Miss Mucho. Oh, I'm very sorry, but I have to go down to Los Angeles. I'm having a dinner party at the Ambassador Hotel. <laughs> the Ambassador Hotel. Oh, sure, Abbott. You know where the Ambassador is. That's the home of the Cuckoo Nut Groove. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a thrilling dinner. Yeah. We're going to have crab louis and steamed clams. Clams? <laughs> yes. Don't you just 
the door call. No, I'd rather have a plate of Freud Oosters. <laughs> well, I must be see dawdling along. I beg your pardon? I must be see dawdling along. Oh, well, we were saying. Was that tight? I sure knock off those Spanish words, don't I? Well, that's one turn down for your body. I don't care, Rabbit. I don't care if she don't want to come. Well. Here comes my girlfriend, Lena Gensler. She'll come to my party tonight. She's madly in love with me. Ah, there you are, you sawed-off Boris Karloff. <laughs> Standing on street corners, flirting with girls. I wasn't flirting with any girls, Lena. I'm saving myself for you. Thanks, Faso, for saving so much. <laughs> I've got a bone to pick with you. I put some of that perfume you gave me on my hair. Wait a minute. I think it has a nice golden tint. Uh, what is it? Chanel number five? No, Kemptone number seven. <laughs> what? Roller and all. <laughs> you little worm. Please, Lena, let's be friends. I'd never desert you. I'd stand by you. I'm as solid as the rock of Gibraltar. I can believe that. You're sticking out in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Look, Lena, don't talk like that. I was just going to ask you to come to my Christmas party tonight. Are you kidding? I'm going out with Van Johnson tonight. Oh, Van Johnson. You always talk about Van Johnson. <laughs> Take away his blonde curly hair. What do you got left? I don't know, but you can deliver to my house in the morning. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, there's number two that ain't going to come to my party hey, tonight. Hey, Costello. Look, isn't that Mrs. Niles getting off the streetcar? Oh, hello, Miss Abbott. Do you always stand on street corners leaning on a trash can? Oh, that's Costello. I didn't recognize him. <laughs> he, he looks like the third day of the last weekend. <laughs> you know, I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Niles. I was going to thank you for that beautiful Christmas card I got this morning. Oh, it really was nothing. It was merely a picture of me smiling. I know it, but how did you get your teeth to spell out Merry Christmas? <laughs> now, now, please. Now, stop that or Mrs. Niles won't come to your party. I wouldn't come to his party anyway. I always run around with younger people. It helps me to keep young. Oh, in fact, I dread to think of life at 70. Why? What happened then? <laughs> Well, it looks like you're not going to have any party. That's the third turndown you've had. I don't care, Rabbit. Uh, Let's go home. I'm going to call up some of my other friends. I'll get somebody to come. Here, come on. Let's grab this cab. Cabby, drive us to North Hollywood. North Hollywood? What's the matter with Glendale? There's nothing wrong with Glendale. I don't live there. Oh, Glendale ain't good enough for you, huh? <laughs> go on, go on, Costello. Say it. Glendale is a one-horse town. Glendale ain't a one-horse town. Oh, then why did I lose my job with the city street department? <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on, don't stand there. Say it. Say, tell people I'm not a citizen of Glendale. Go on, say I never even voted. You voted. You voted. You voted. <laughs> Three times, huh? <laughs> Go on, start a rumor. Tell everybody I got paid when I voted. Melonhead, you didn't get a cent for voting. Oh, the six dollars they gave me was for a dog life. Oh, now I'm a dog, huh? Tell everybody I'm a dog. Throw me a piece of liver. I wouldn't throw you my liver. What's the matter with your liver? All right, you tell me what's wrong with my liver. Get a load of this punk. Now, he wants me to go to school for four years, study day and night to be a doctor, just so I can tell him what's wrong with his liver. <laughs> Melonhead, I don't want you to go to school. Oh, you want me to be a moron like you? <laughs> please, please, fellows, this is, this is the Christmas season. Remember, peace on earth. Yeah, Melonhead, why do you have to pick on me like this? Yes, Melonhead, haven't you ever heard of the expression, turn the other cheek? Boys, you're right. I feel sorry for everything I said here tonight, and I, I'd like to turn the other cheek so I can feel the humility. Costello, will you please slap me? You mean that? Yes. You mean... Oh, I slapped you before I should, didn't I? Go on, go ahead, slap you. Okay. Now, now, slap the other cheek. Here. Are you kidding? No. Yeah. Thanks, Costello. You know, nobody would ever believe that Melonhead would turn the other cheek. Costello? Yeah. Will you please write down on this paper here that I did? Oh, sure. Sure. I, Lou Costello, slapped Melonhead on both cheeks. There you are. I suppose you're going to show this to all your friends. No. I'm going to show it to my lawyer. I'll sue you for assault. I'll sue you for battery. Get me a lawyer. Get me a judge and a jury. I'll be sure. Get me out of here. Five 
five centuries for the wisdom of Ethan. Experience is the best teacher. Yes, experience is the best teacher. When cigarettes were scarce, most smokers took what they could get. One day one brand, another day some other brand. What did that experience teach? Well, actions speak louder than words. Yes, actions speak louder than words. The actions of smokers today speak louder than any words about any cigarette. For after more experience with different brands than ever before, more smokers are asking for camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels are the choice, for experience is the best teacher. Well, Costello, it's 12 midnight. Not a soul has shown up for your party. I can't understand it. I don't know. Nobody showed up for my party at all. I thought my girlfriend, Lena, would surely show up. Yes. It's a shame that you aren't going to, to get to kiss her under the mistletoe. The what? The mistletoe. Didn't you ever kiss a girl under the mistletoe? No, I always kiss them under the nose. <laughs> well, it looks like nobody's going to kiss you tonight. Yes, Abbott. All my friends have deserted me. I'm just a failure. Ah, oh, no, you're not, Costello. You're a big success. No, Abbott, I'm just a complete flop. No, you're not, Costello. You're a great guy. Not no, a... Abbott, I'm just a sort of little ugly-looking dope. Well, don't stand there. Argue with me. <laughs> oh, stop this, Costello, please. I'm going to bed, Abbott. Good night. Wait a minute. Aren't you uh, going to hang up your stocking? No. Santa Claus won't even come here. Now, that's wrong, Costello. Santa Claus loves everybody. He doesn't love me, Abbott. He don't. Santa Claus has never come to my house on Christmas since I was seven years old. I was a smart aleck little kid in those days, just like some boys and girls are today. I went around saying I didn't believe in Santa Claus. If a kid come up and said he believed in Santa Claus, I used to say, Ah, oh, you're nothing but a sissy. There ain't no Santa Claus. That's your father. But now I realize how wrong I was. I want to tell all the little boys and girls what happened to me. Let's all be children again. Let me take you back to Christmas Eve some 20 years ago. I'd been out all day playing with my friends Chowderhead Abbott and Skinny Niles. It was a beautiful Christmas Eve. Snow was falling. And you could see the lights on the Christmas trees and all the houses. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Just like the one we Talking it, Ma. I'm trying to get the money out. <laughs> but there's no money in that cat. Oh, uh, yes, there is. Last night when Pa was playing poker, I heard him say, Everybody put money in a kitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. for your father now. No, that was kind of a sneaky knock. It's probably the Iceman. Oh, never mind the door. I'll see who it is. You go wash your dirty face. Oh, Ma, why can't I just go up and, 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 and cover the dirt with powder like you do? <laughs> Why, it's the little Abbott boy and the Niles boy. Uh, we came over to tell you what Louie did. Uh, he came over to my house and asked my mother to bend her head down so he could see her horns. You snitcher. Why? <laughs> Why, Louie, I'll tell you, naughty boy. Whatever made you think that Mrs. Abbott had horns? I heard you say that when she got dressed up, she looked like the devil. <laughs> Yeah, Nanny, don't. You did either, Miss Costello. Louie said my mother keeps a cat in the icebox. Why, Mrs. Niles does not keep a cat in her icebox. Then why does everybody say she's got a frozen puss? <laughs> <laughs> you children, stop this arguing. And, Louie, you get ready for bed right away. Santa Claus will be coming along any minute now. Good night. Gee, I can hardly wait until Santa Claus gets here. Gee, listen, Kenny. I hear sleigh bells. Yeah, and I can hear him walking around on the roof. He's getting ready to come down the chimney. <laughs> Who built that fire in the fire? <laughs> I did. Uh, do you realize that you gave me a hot foot? That isn't the way I planned it. 
Well, I'm sorry I'm late, boys. But I had to stop off at Betty Grable's house. Why did you have to stop off there, Santa? After spending a year up there in the cold north, he's got to thaw out someplace. <laughs> Why, Louie? Gee, Santa Claus, I, I hope you brung us kids some nice presents. Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. I brought some nice presents for you, Buddy Abbott, and you, Kenny Niles. But as for you, Louis Costello, you've been a bad boy. You hear? A bad boy. Santa Claus, did you have lamb chops for dinner? <laughs> I'll take care of you later, Louis. Here, Kenny and Buddy, here are your presents. Now run along home like good little boys. Gee, thanks, yeah. Santa. That's all good right. Night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Now, Louis Costello, I want to show you all the black marks I've got down here against you and my book. Now, here's a report from your Sunday school teacher. She tells me you put fly paper in all the pews last Sunday. That you put a cat in the pipe organ. That you put Limburger cheese behind all the radiators. And then you put a cat from a Coca-Cola bottle in the collection box and took out 15 cents cake. <laughs> now, what do you say to that? I'm a busy little bee, ain't I? Oh, silence. You haven't heard the worst. I see that a few years ago you flirted with a little girl in school. Is that true? I'm afraid it is. And is it true that you gave her your class pin? What class pin? I was only two years old. I gave her the only pin I had. <laughs> all right, all right. Let, let the whole thing drop. That's what happened. <laughs> and finally, Louis, the biggest black mark against you is that you've got a book under your mattress. Yes, sir. Santa Claus, it's only a book about how to make tea the right color. How to make tea the right color? What's the name of it? Forever Amber. <laughs> well, I guess that settles it, Louis. I'm afraid there's nothing I can leave you for Christmas. Nothing? You mean just plain zero? Uh, that's right, Louis. Maybe someday when you've learned to behave yourself, I may come back again. Well, good night. Gee. I guess I'm just the kind of a boy my mother don't want me to associate with. <laughs> Nobody likes me. Even Santa Claus can't stand me. Buddy Abbott and Kenny Niles both got presents, but I didn't get nothing. I'm going to write a letter to my mom and my pop, and then I'm going to run away from here. Dear mom and pop, when you read this, I will be thousands of miles away. Don't ever look for me because you're not going to find me. I'm never coming back. Maybe someday when I'm old, about 11 or 12, after I make a million dollars, I'll come home and I'll buy a, a nice new dress, Mom, and I'll give Pop a new pair of overalls. That's what he calls his happy clothes. Please take the fleas out of my flea circus and put them back on the dog so they won't get homesick. And don't forget to feed my little pet skunk twice a day. There's a clothespin hanging by his cage. I love you, Mom and Pop. But this is the best way out. Your loving son, Louis Costello. Boys and girls, that happened over 20 years ago, and Santa Claus has never come back to see me to this day. Please, kiddies, take a lesson from me and be good boys and girls. So that next Monday night, Christmas Eve, you won't be waiting for Santa Claus that didn't come like I've been waiting for all these years. Oh, come, Lou. I guess we'd better go to bed. Well, look. Hey, Abbott. It's Lena and Connie Haynes and it's Melonhead and Tim Isles. Oh, boy. You all came to my party. Yes, yes, and I'm here too, Louis. Santa Claus. You finally came and you even brought your horse with you. What horse? It's me. <laughs> Pardon me, Mrs. Niles. Gee, I didn't dream that anything like this was going to happen. I thought that nobody cared about me anymore. I was dreaming of a sly Christmas. I thought my friends had passed me by. Why, you know, Costello. That you're one fellow that we all think <laughs> Loved by both the kids and old folks, though you have whiskers on your jokes. <laughs> May your life be merry and bright, and may all your Christmases come be happy, Mrs. Miles. Wow.
that's in just a moment. And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the men who won the victory. Tonight, we salute the 66th, the Black Panther Division, heroes of L'Oreal San Nazar and the Army of Occupation. In your honor, men of the Black Panther Division, the makers of camels are sending to other servicemen still overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the two camel radio shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. A total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week. Are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now, here are Bud and Lou with the final word. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, wait a minute. I, uh, hey, Abbott, wait a minute. I don't see that guy here that always yells, No, no, not that. You know, oh, hey, Costello, oh. I didn't want to spoil oh. the Christmas spirit on your show tonight. Oh, that's awfully sweet of you. I also want to thank you for that lovely present you sent me. That's mm-hmm. the best game I ever played. Game? I didn't send you any game. I sent you an autographed picture of myself. How do you like that? My wife and I sat up all night trying to pin a tail on it. <laughs> Good night, folks. A Merry Christmas to everybody. Yes, Merry Christmas to everybody. And don't forget to buy another Victory Bond at your local theater. Merry Christmas to everybody in Patterson, New Jersey. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a tea. Just four more days till Christmas. Are there still any blanks on your gift list? If you know a pipe smoker, here's a grand answer. The colorful Christmas tin of Prince Albert tobacco. It holds a full pound, 400 pipefuls of the world's most popular pipe tobacco. The tobacco that's crimp cut for slow, cool burning. The tobacco that's processed to remove bite and sting before it's packed. And you won't have to shop around for that present. You'll find the Christmas tin of Prince Albert most everywhere tobacco is sold. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, coast to coast on NBC. The Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at the very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant. Good night.